Hey guys, this is Gagan. Welcome to my channel and I'm back again after quite some time. So first of all, I want to thank you all guys for all the support and encouragement that you have given me. I was reading the comments on this channel and they're wonderful. और आप लोगों ने जो इतने मुझे प्यारे प्यारे मैसेजेस किए मेरी बाकी सोशल मीडिया साइट्स पे और इतना इनक्रेज किया इतना सपोर्ट किया थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ऑल दैट इसी चीज़ ने मुझे मोटिवेट किया टू कम बैक अगेन एंड कंटिन्यू दिस चैनल सो अ वेरी बिग थैंक यू टू यू ओके सो लेट मी गिव यू सम अपडेट्स अबाउट मी आई हैव कम्प्लीटेड माई एम बी बी एस दिस ईयर एक्चुअली आई ग्रेजुएटेड इन जुलाई and and i'm very happy being back with my family after 6 long years so let's get started um actually i had many topics in my mind but i have decided to start with a simple but very important topic topics actually uh, and that would be uh, anaphylaxis angio edema and allergic rhinitis so to make you better understand this topic i'll be adding some pictures of each condition with it and at the end of this video we can review a few mcqs so that it gets printed in our head sounds good let's get started so anaphylaxis is a severe potentially life threatening allergic reaction so we can say that it is the worst form of allergy or allergic reaction and okay so what happens is when we get exposed to something that we are allergic to it could be anything so let's say like that etiology could be anything it could be um insect bites or it could be insect bites stings it could be medicines various medicines which the most common ones are penicillins and it could be any type of food but the most common ones are peanuts and shellfish so when we get exposed to something that we are allergic to our body releases ige so before that i would like to tell you that anaphylaxis is type 1 hypersensitivity reaction and type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is mediated by immunoglobulin e this is the main thing so when we get exposed to any of these or anything that we are allergic to in in our body immunoglobulin e will bind to uh, there are specific cells which they bind to which are called mast cells so these mast cells will then release histamine prostaglandins which i'll write as pge and leukotrienes and these are responsible these are mainly responsible for producing all the symptoms of anaphylaxis which we'll discuss now so the symptom it can affect any any body system so let's check what it does so we can have hives itching which are very common in anaphylaxis um we can have airway obstruction so we can we can learn it in a way that it will affect all kind of all the body systems so if we are looking for hives and itching we can say that it affected the skin right if it affects airway obstruction it can cause wheezing or stridor so it can be respiratory it will cause tachycardia and hypotension so this is for cardio and it can cause um gi symptoms which will be nausea vomiting it can also cause dizziness and various other things so anaphylaxis can affect any system of the body so what you have to do as treatment for anaphylaxis is 
immediate IM which is intramuscular epinephrine and you can give antihistamines also you can give corticosteroids and I forgot to mention that um, if of course if you have airway obstruction you need to intubate immediately or you can do cricothyroidotomy there is an important thing that I want to mention is that hives is also called urticaria. This is what we get in most of our exams. I'm going to show a picture of urticaria so that we get a better understanding of what urticaria is. So something about urticaria is that urticaria is an important part of anaphylaxis but whenever you see urticaria it does not always mean that the patient has anaphylaxis. It could be just urticaria. So for urticaria, you just give antihistamine. This is all about anaphylaxis. Angioedema is a sudden swelling of eyes, face, tongue, airways or anything. It is majorly due to... It is majorly because of an enzyme deficiency and that enzyme is called C1 esterase inhibitor. So in this, there will be sudden swelling of, it could be anything, it could be face, um, tongue, airways, face means anything, eyes, cheeks, lips, anything. So this is majorly because of this enzyme deficiency and to diagnose it, We'll check this enzyme level C1 so this enzyme levels and it will be of course decreased. We can also check uh, the complement 2 and C4 levels which will also be increased which will also be decreased uh, because C1 helps in the activation of C2 and C4. So if it is decreased it will also be decreased. So to treat it, we'll first protect the airway by intubation, airway protection, and also and also we'll give epinephrine. There are two drugs that are very important in the treatment of this condition, which is calentoid and event. So the mechanism of acalentoid is that it inhibits an enzyme which is called calicrine. Calicrine is an enzyme which activates another substance which is called calinogen to bradykinin in our body. So this, this enzyme will activate this and bradykinane is vasodilator in our body which will cause the inflammation and swelling. So this drug will inhibit it so that carinogen cannot be activated to bradykinane and, there, and therefore the vasodilation cannot occur so the swelling will not be there. And the second drug that is very important is a cantivan. Its mechanism of action is that it is bradykinin receptor blocker. So it will it will directly block the bradykinin so that it cannot result in vasodilation. So a very important part for angioedema is that it can be an adverse reaction to a medicine which is ACE inhibitors. Just to help you with ACE inhibitors, ACE inhibitors always end 
with brill. Example would be analog brill. This side effect. This is a very common question that we get in our exams. So just keep in mind that ACE inhibitor has a side effect of angioedema and ACE inhibitors end with Prill. For example, analog Prill. To get a better understanding of angioedema, I'll show you the picture of angioedema now. You can see. So this is all about angioedema. Now we will discuss about allergic rhinitis. This is also called seasonal hay fever, which is a very common term. Again, the mechanism of action would be that the IgE, which is immunoglobulin E, will bind to mast cells and it will release histamine and this will call, cause the symptoms. So let's check what the symptoms are. Symptoms could be three eyes, runny nose, they could have nasal polyps or we could have pale turbinates etc. So here's a picture of the symptoms to understand this concept better. So I'll read the symptoms again. It's red, itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, congestion, runny nose, itchy or sore throat, post nasal drip and cough. If a patient has allergic rhinitis, there is a big possibility that he will have recurrent symptoms, recurrent episodes. Okay, so to diagnose it, we can first see if he, if he has recurrent episodes it can point towards allergic rhinitis. We can check IgE levels specific to allergen or uh, we can do skin and blood tests and we can also check the nasal smear at the nasal smear in allergic rhinitis, we'll see xenophils. So to treat it, first of all, it's always better to educate the patient about prevention techniques. So he can avoid the allergens or he can know that these symptoms are related to the allergy so that he can, he can get the help as soon as possible. Other options could be antihistamines or it could be corticosteroids and most effective treatment, sometimes this is asked in some of the exams, so the most effective treatment is desensitization, desensitization to the allergen. So this is all about allergic rhinitis. Let's review some MCQs so that it gets printed on our heads. The first question is, your patient is having a sudden and severe anaphylactic reaction to a medication. You immediately stop the medication and call a rapid response. The patient's blood pressure is 80 by 52, which is low, heart rate 120, and oxygen saturation 87%. Audible wheezing is noted along with facial redness and swelling. As a doctor, you know that the first initial treatment for this patient's condition is so we can see that he has severe anaphylactic reaction to a medication and he has hypotension, tachycardia, audible wheezing is there, facial redness and swelling so as we discussed in today's topic what should be the initial treatment for this patient's condition I would suggest you to pause this video for a second and think about the answer and then listen to the explanation okay so the answer to this question would be IN epinephrine which would be option C so let's check all the options 
First option is IV diphenhydramine, which is an antihistamine. We can give it, but it would not be the first initial treatment. Second option is IV normal saline bolus. We could give it because of low blood pressure. We could give it because of low blood pressure, but it's not the first initial treatment that they are asking about. And nebulized albuterol, it's just for wheezing, it's just to treat the wheezing, but it will not help other things. So the correct answer is I am epinephrine. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Acantiband has recently shown efficacy in the treatment of ACE inhibitor induced angioedema and in hereditary angioedema. What, it, what is its mechanism of action? So I would again suggest to pause for a while and choose an option. Okay, so let's get to the answer of this. The answer would be option A, inhibition of predikinin 2 receptor. As we discussed today in the video, that the mechanism of action of acantiband is predikinin receptor blocker so that it cannot cause visualization. Moving on to the next question. You are providing care to a patient in anaphylactic shock. What is not a typical medical treatment for this condition? You see the not here? It's very it's tricky sometimes when we don't see it. So the answer to this question would be IV furosemide. Let's get let's see all of the options. First option is IV diphenhydramine, as I told that it is antihistamine, so we would probably we would give it epinephrine, of course, it is the first initial treatment. Corticosteroids, yes, it helps. Isotonic IV fluids, yes, of course, it helps. IV furosemide is diuretic, and I don't see a point in giving diuretic and anaphylactic shock. So the answer would be IV furosemide. Next and last question for today. Okay. 62-year-old African-American man with a history of stage 3 chronic kidney disease as well as coronary artery disease status post MI with left ventricular dysfunction presents to the ER acutely with tongue and lip swelling associated with airway compromise that began 2 hours after his morning medication. Which medication is most likely to blame? So, in this question, they have mentioned a history of chronic kidney disease and coronary artery disease. And we know that we give ACE inhibitors in those. He is presenting with the symptoms of tongue and lip swelling associated with airway compromise after his morning medication, which clearly indicates to angioedema because of ACE inhibitors. So, which medication is most likely to blame would be lisinopril. As I told you that ACE inhibitors end with pril. So the answer would be lisinopril. Hydrochlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic. Oral nitrate is vasodilator. Simvastatin is statin. Metoprolol is beta blocker. So this is all for today. I hope this video was helpful for you. And I hope you got a better understanding of anaphylaxis, angioedema and allergic rhinitis. And I hope that the questions at the end helped you as well. Please give me the feedback in the comment section below or you can, if you have any question, you can message me on any of my social media sites. The link to those will be in the description as well. And, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.